Hello everyone, greetings from India. This is Nirbhay Chauhan from Make Love Via Self Learning Tutorials. Well guys, today in this tutorial we will quickly go through how we can like have such movable sliding warehouse setup basically. So all of these are beam objects only. You might have seen the previous story also if in case not. Feel free to go through that. So in the earlier tutorial we have seen we had the assembly objects quite fixed in nature right here also we have fixed object but couple of them like are sliding right you can see here th these are the two walls for the warehouse this is the crane right and this is the hook if you can see this is also sliding right and this is how these are constrained you are sliding like this the supporting walls are also moving right so these kind of constraints are basically set up there right so you must be wondering how I'm able to move these so make sure you have Tinkercad selected here uh, for the navigation of your mouse basically so that is something which basically helps so so that you don't skip this step this is something very basic thing but uh, still it should be helpful so make sure Tinkercad is selected so with left click you can select any object right and for the assembly movable object this is also something also very helpful and with right uh, click of your mouse you can rotate with the mid wheel holding it you can pan right so okay coming back to our topic basically so we will quickly see how we have like set up this assembly right where we have this conveyor system uh, sorry the crane system for the warehouse right guys so we'll quickly open the basic model which I have set up for you uh, which is this one right so let's switch to no shading also okay so here we have the basic uh, system uh, of the basic model basically but it's not moving right so now we will try to create assembly out of it okay so let's make a quick create a group also here basically we should say model and let's move these objects to the model right so if you saw that you can quickly hide or unhide it now what we'll do is we're already in the assembly workbench uh, let's hide this model now let's click on start create new assembly right and here we have an option to insert assembly object right guys so what we'll do here is we will choose the base platform first click on it we want to keep this grounded so click on it yes right now let's insert the support wall uh, this one right so this also this basically want it fixed to the platform so what we'll do is click OK and now we will try to have let's make it orthograph it for easy reference here yeah. so we will basically keep it fixed to our main platform so click on this fixed joint right select this vertex so this vertex option is basically only available in FreeCAD 1.1 version which I am currently using I have also shown you in the previous tutorial like uh, I have given a download link also there right guys so select on this vertex and then let's choose this vertex right click on OK so this is now properly constrained and this is fixed it won't move right uh, we want to insert this support wall once again so click on this object and click on support it is inserted right and again for this also we will give the fixed constraint a fixed joint so select this vertex and then the vertex of this wall click on OK and this is done right so now we have the base platform grounded we have two supporting walls basically just for reference sake and now we will insert the movable boundary walls or the crane system basically so we have the wedges also here basically along with which your crane would move right guys so we insert the object and then we have the uh, we can say crane so crane we can insert later maybe so let's insert the walls uh, these walls right we click on ok uh, let's shift a little bit like this so that we can easily 
constraint when wanted. So now basically we want these uh, crane walls to be sliding along these wedges. Right guys, so what you can do that quickly. So you have this option which says create slider joint. Click on this, right? And now let's just quickly select this length, uh, this, uh, this edge very carefully. Then let's select the edge of this. Let me just make it like this. Yeah, now it's easy. Cool. So these are now done, the, but these are now slightly rotated. So here you can choose the rotation. Uh, let's make it 180. Yep. So you have this now placed and you can click on them. You can see these are moving, but these are moving beyond your systems, beyond your crane. So you want to give a specified uh, limit like till here and the other one till there, right? So the very easy way for this is you can see here minimum length and maximum length are like changing. So just keep on moving like this. And you can see this should be minus 20 feet approximately. So this is done, right? Similarly, you want to give the maximum one also. So that is somewhere lying around. Just see the reading there. 9 feet 11 inches. So that's around 10 feet. Click on this. Choose 10 feet there. And now let's just try to play with it. Yep. So it's not going beyond now this. And it's not going beyond the left spot also. So we are done with this. Simple. Click OK. So now you have inserted your supporting wall. And now you can like click on it and move it also. Like just to quickly animate. And now we want the crane on top of these supporting walls. So we go to insert parts again and we click on the crane object. Right. Which is somewhere here. Right. And basically we click on OK. And we want this crane to be sliding on top of these walls. Right. This is also quite simple. We go to sliding joint again. Right. We carefully select this edge. Uh, right or oh, let's say we select this edge of the wall first and then this edge cool uh, this should need some rotation around 180 degrees this is done and now again just like we did for the walls we will choose the minimum and maximum basically length for this so this is also going beyond so let's keep it nearby this and you can see the reading of minimum length reads, reads to minus 12 inches, which is minus 1 feet, right? So this is constraint here. For the maximum length, uh, this should be... Okay, uh, so this is reversed. So what we'll do is so the maximum should be minus one feet basically guys and the minimum would uh, would basically increase yep so this is where it has to go so like this so in this case it's around minus nine that's how you get the approximation quickly that's the quickest way if in case you don't have the dimensions handy. So you can see it's not going beyond. And when it tries to go beyond, it then starts keep along with it. Basically, it also tries to move the uh, object which is constrained to it below, which is our wall object. So you can see, we try to make it beyond and then the limit reaches and it starts to slide your wall object also. This is how beautifully they are constrained. And now let's just, just quickly give the hook object also, which should be somewhere here, right? So click on insert part and we have this hook object, which is this lying here somewhere, right? And this also we will need to slide along this edge, but in the center, right guys? So how we'll do that is, uh, go to sliding 
constraint again select this edge and then let us just select this edge right so this is constraint there okay before we go to uh, its offset in the center let's fix the uh, horizontal movement of this hook along the crane basically so let's move it like this so you can then read see the readings so minimum length is basically uh, let's give it around seven feet only we don't want it to go much beyond so somewhere here and uh, maximum length we can give around minus seven maybe let's see if that's how it should behave yes it's working so like this so you can see it's not going beyond now cool and now we want this to be positioned in the center of the crane so how you can do this this crane is around two feet so go to show advanced offsets click on offset one and this axis is basically a local axis is that's a y1 basically if we try to move it yes it's moving so this should be around 12 inches which is one feet click on ok so now this is properly positioned at the center and you can play with this like this you can see it's going till the limit only right guys so this is how basically you have your animated or moving objects moving beam objects like when you want to create an assembly so it's not basically just machinery object but in the architectural and structural fields also like you have warehouses and other basically kind of structures where you want to see how the assembly operates right and that's how basically you can create this uh, one thing basically we missed here if you might have seen these walls need to go down inside this right guys so you can do that now also in the joints this was the first slider joint this one you can just space over it and you can see this is coming this is showing here right so uh, for this one simply double click on it right and show advanced offsets so the axis which basically going downwards uh, this is red one and red one in in our global axis is x axis here it is z axis basically for the x right so click on offset one so it should be the x one which should go below can see it's going down so this should be minus 12 inches minus 1 feet click on ok and you have seen rest of the assembly has also moved beautifully with it so you can see it's moving and it is totally grounded to the to the basically wedges of that uh, you can switch to perspective view also so I'll attach this exercise file along the description of the video feel free to download it right and you can reverse engineer and see how the things are basically done you can go through a tutorial where you can pose it wherever you want guys right so this was something I wanted to show for the designers for the architects right who are designing their warehouses so this is some kind of basic example right guys I hope you guys like the video uh, right let me know with your comments any suggestions uh, it motivates me and if in case you uh, feel my work is helpful, you're learning something, feel free to buy me a coffee there. It will really matter a lot. Like kind, that's a kind of motivation because it, there is so much effort which goes on when we create a video. So, right guys. So, thank you so much. Uh, see you next tutorial, next video guys. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you.